quality and quantity of movement, but I'm looking for provocation of symptoms also. And go ahead and do that again for me, Justin. Okay. So my left hand on his left shoulder, coming up right underneath his, his right shoulder, and then over pressing. Any problems? Oh yeah, where? Okay. Where? It just was a crack. It's it's okay. It's, it's gone now. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Can uh, hug yourself. So just the sim similar with thoracic rotation, um, you can keep them seated here. You don't have to go to the corner. Um, so let me have you turn to your uh, left, and then come on back and turn again to the left. And I'm going to stabilize his legs to control hip rotation and apply over pressure. Okay. Let's have you turn right, come on back, any problems, turn right again, stabilize his right leg, and any problems there? No. Okay. So just know that there are quadrants with the thoracic spine, but it isn't really part of the normal active range of motion, but you could potentially, so if you put your hands behind your neck, uh, Justin, you could add flexion, you could side bend, you could rotate them, so take them into those movements if these movements didn't necessarily provoke his symptoms. Okay, so you may need to be more aggressive. So you can get them into extension and side bend them and rotate them and go different quadrants. But, it's, but it, it isn't part of, you know how in the cervical uh, exam we have the lower cervical and the lumbar the, the lumbar quadrant, it, it, it really isn't part of the whole examination, but just to let you know that you can do it. Okay.